Now there are very few characters, very few actors who are known simply by one name and this man is one of them. If I say Nidge, you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> I am. Fran, please. Please, just let him lean go, will you? Look, will you do me one favour, will you? Don't go near him, right? I'm gonna get Dave to give you a call, okay? What do I want to talk to Dave for? She me right there for a second, Darren, please. For a second, okay. <laughs> The attention the show has received and, and the kind of fascination uh, the show has now, the reach it has in this country is so massive and the effect it's having kind of the cultural consciousness of Ireland now, it's, it's kind of extraordinary. I'd never been here in the first four series for Transmission because I live in England, but last year was the first time I'd been in Ireland when it was being uh, shown. It was just extraordinary, you know, about kind of going shopping on a Sunday or something and people be saying, oh, I can't wait to watch it tonight, I'm going to hurry home and watch it, or we've got the family around, we're all going to get a takeaway and sit and... People have a real passionate connection to the characters, a passionate connection to the storylines, and that's a, a mark of, of the quality of the show, you know, from the writing, the producing, directing, the acting, everything. So it's, it's, a, it's an amazing journey we're on, you know. You all right, buddy? Did you have a good day? People were dying to hear your real life oh, accent. Yeah, yeah. Do you still get a reaction to that? Yeah, often uh, kind of confusion. And um, it's because I've lived in England a long time. I've played a lot of English parts and my wife is English. I've lived in England like 14 years. And so the muscles of your mouth kind of morph. And my dad is very funny. My dad one time left an answer machine. I just recorded a new answer message on my phone. And he called and he, his, me his message was, I don't know who that fella is. I'm not leaving a message for that. When that fella gets his accent back, then I'll leave a message, which was very funny. There's no rats. There's always rats, Nitch. I'll hunt them down for sport. What can you tell us about the new season? I think after the death of Darren, he went into a very severe depression for the whole of the fourth series, really. Great self-hatred and self-loathing that culminated in a kind of a a rebirth or a reawakening at the end of the fourth series. So his ambition is really big now and uh, he's, uh, he's very focused on that. But all the time bubbling underneath that there are these ghosts he thought that he had laid to rest and those come back to haunt him and he's, uh, I think he's a man who knows he's damned on one level. That life I suppose you, you, over time you build up those enemies and the, and the people who want revenge. And the thing about it is is that the person he, he uh, doesn't see in his rearview mirror is Siobhan at the moment because he has no idea her connection to the police. He's like a rat in the corner himself, like a dog who survived and, and he's uh, he's riding the punches and he's really going forward so he's full-blooded. You never can account for how people are going to react and that's why that's why good drama, great drama will incite different things in different people and so you have the cat incident or whatever and, and, and people are entitled to react however they want to. So, uh, so yeah, the same will be in the next series. They will throw up many, I'm sure, you know, bizarre kind of pe people's bizarre attachment to certain things. Yeah. I need someone to watch my back. Why do we do it? Chase power, cling to power. And we're all destined to lose it someday. It was amazing working with Aidan again and, and uh, an incredible time in our history, full of these incredible personalities and uh, the show reflects that and, and gives full rein to their kind of egos and you know it's, it's a great drama. My first week of filming of Love Hate in the first series was basically a crash course on acting for the screen and to have someone like Aidan to work opposite and watch his skill and his detail and the, his truth he brings to his work was an I couldn't have been in better hands in terms of learning from him but I remember texting him going thanks so much for all I've learned from you and he said well, would you tell me what you've learned from me so I can, I can use it? You know, he's a very irreverent man, very, he's got great modesty or humility like all great artists. You got to meet a PJ when yes. you were researching for the role. He was incredibly generous with his time and he, he was, uh, yeah, he was really wonderful and, and he gave me great insights into the period and into his, his role and his uh, relationship with High. So it was invaluable and, and uh, hopefully that's, that'll be reflected in my performance. I just don't know. <laughs> Ed Sheeran, we interviewed him. He said the best thing, he's a huge Ireland fan as we know, but his thing that he loves the most is you. Nidge probably was my favourite character from the beginning, so I'm glad that he's uh, survived so long. Yeah. Do you have any of the catchphrases in your head or fizzy orange? I'm just, ah yeah, ah yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I have. Nidgey. <laughs> <laughs>
That's a great honor to be like, you know, to have the kind of, to be, you know, to be mimicked by someone like that, you know.